Here we go, agents. Another couple of chapters with our friend Lawn Boy. When we left, he ended us on a cliff cliffhanger and said, if I had known what was coming, I might have fired up the mower, stuck it in Max Rabbit, and put put it all the way home to hide in my room. Let's find out why he said that. Chapter six, economic expansion combined with portfolio diversification. Okay, let's find out what it means. Economic expansion, economy or the movement, the flow of money, expanding, expansion. So how money flows, expanding, or how many options money can flow to. Combined with portfolio diversification. A portfolio for like an artist or um, what they're talking about here is it is um, a, a combination of all the things you've invested in. So if you have a, a stock portfolio, a stock portfolio lists all the different things you've invested in, what you've put money into. So if you have more than one company you've invested in, you have a portfolio. You might invest in AT&T and Apple and um uh, Von Tobel Lumber and Arby's and McDonald's. You may have you may have invested in a lot of those things, and they're part of your portfolio. An artist portfolio shows a lot of the work that they have done, um, or the art pieces they've created. So, m the flow of money expanding combined with the amount of your stocks or your your portfolios diversification. You should hear the word diversify or diversity in there. If something is diverse, it means it has a lot of variety to it. So a diverse population would have people from lots of different places or from different ethnicities. You might have African Americans. You might have Native Americans. You might have um, Caucasians. You might have Asians. You might have Hispanics. You might have Portuguese. You might have... Indian, you might have Filipina, you know, there are lots of different um, races and, and kinds of people. Well, diversity means that you have a lot of different things coming together. Portfolio diversification means don't invest your money just in one thing, spread it out, invest in a lot of things. Okay, here we go. Two weeks passed, 14 days passed, 336 hours flew by, 20,160 minutes whistle passed, 12 million 96 thousand seconds roared away. Numbers, all numbers. And that's what happened to the time. It turned into numbers. In the beginning, I had a routine. I got up early, had some cereal before my parents even woke up, grabbed a gallon jug of water from the fridge, and packed a bag lunch that I'd eat on the back of the mower while I was working. There was never any time to stop for lunch, so I got good at eating and mowing. Then left the house to start work. First, I checked the oil in the mower. Pascal showed me how to do it, and because it's an old engine, it needs a fair amount of oil. Then I added oil if it needed it, filled it with gas, and headed off down the street to Arnold's house, where I met Louis, a thin man with a small pickup. For two weeks, we loaded my mower on a small trailer he pulled behind the pickup and headed to our latest jobs. And at the end of the day, we went back to Arnold's, and I would ride my mower home and fall into bed until the next morning. Louis and I were doing three lawns a day each, with Pascal coming to work in the evening and early morning to do edge work and cleanup. So... Lawn boy's doing three lawns a day. Louis is doing three lawns a day. So remember, he's he's doing more jobs because he has more people. And then Pascal would do edge work and clean up. Do you guys know what that means? Edge work is if you edge a lawn, um, grass can grow kind of sideways over the edge onto like concrete or sidewalks or something. Edging is when you are you take a machine and you cut off the edge of the lawn so the grass is nice and neat. You can also um, trim shrubs and bushes and stuff like that, and that's kind of edge work. Um, one night late, I stayed late and talked to Pascal. We can't keep up, I said. We're locked into a ginormous number of lawns now once a week, and I'm having to turn more people down. No, Pascal shook his head. Don't turn away work. Soon the summer will pass, the grass will be gone, and the work will fly away. We must make our lives while the summer is here. I know someone, Benny. He has a truck, and he'll come tomorrow morning. I have another cousin who can help me at night, and others if you get more jobs. But you must not turn work down. And so I went on adding lawns. What does, what does he mean? What does Pascal mean that um, we must live our lives while the summer is here? Think about what kind of work they do. They do lawn work. The summer is really the biggest time for lawn work, spring and summer, because what happens in the fall and the winter? 
It gets too cold and the grass doesn't grow. I kept track of the lawns in a little notebook. Then I bought a larger one and wrote down the names, addresses, and dates mode so there was some order. Then I got jobs to do shrub trimming and pool cleanup and sidewalk edging and garage cleaning, and there were more and more people working away. One morning, I arrived at Arnold's, put putting down the edge of the road on my grandfather's old mower, and there were four pickups and 12 people waiting there for me, and I thought, my Pascal has a large family. And it was only the last week in June. But I really didn't think of much besides keeping track of the new jobs in my notebook and recutting the lawns that came due and collecting the money and handing it over to Arnold. He put aside my percentage and gave the rest to Pascal when he came to work at night. Pascal paid everyone else. Then I'd ride home to dinner with my parents, sleep, and head off on to work on my mower again. Once or twice, Grandma came over for dinner. I see you're making good use of that old mower. Which reminds me, Maggie Doyle and I are going to take a pottery class through the senior center this winter. She nodded happily and reached for the rolls. Even in my exhaustion, I noticed the glance of my parents exchanged over the salad bowl. But don't work too hard, Grandma smiled at me. Is that grass in your hair? I had grass everywhere. In my socks, in my cereal bowl every morning, on my toothbrush. My shoes were stained green, and I couldn't smell anything but fresh-cut grass, and I dreamed about endless lawns and enormous piles of clippings. I found myself thinking about how to best lean into turns so that the mower wouldn't leave rough patches that needed to be trimmed by hand. I spent a great deal of time wondering if I could rig an umbrella to the mower to keep the sun off my face, not because I minded the heat, but because when I squinted, I made the rows uneven. I dug through old copies of Sports Illustrated to look for pictures of Major League ballparks outfields so that I could study the patterns of the ground crews left behind in the nap of the grass. But mostly the work cycle took over and I kind of missed the bigger picture. So he's living and breathing this lawn mowing business. That's all he does. Until one morning, I putted to work and there were five pickups and more people, all with mowers and bags and rakes. About then, Arnold and I sat down and he said, it's inefficient, man, to have you all meet at my place every morning. And besides, the neighbors are starting to wonder why so many people congregate here. So we decided to send everyone directly to their job sites from their homes. And I'd go around with Louie in his truck and supervise and collect the money to bring back to Arnold, who would give Pascal his share and put mine in my account that was in his name. And it was then, that first time that Louie and I drove around, and I began to see that what was happening was bigger than just a few people running around mowing lawns. So Lawn Boys created an entire business, pretty much. Chapter 7. Overutilization of labor compounded by unpredicted capital growth. Overutilization of labor. So overutilizing something. If you overutilize it, you're using it too much. So utilizing something means you use it. Overutilizing, using it too much of labor, using work too much, compounded by, when you're talking about compounded um, interest or compounding in the terms of the economy, it means it's multiplied by. So compound interest is something that your interest, uh, your money multiplies over time because the longer you keep your money in a, an account, the more interest you gain because your interest earns, your money earns interest, then that interest is put back into your money and you have a, a larger amount of money, which means you earn more interest and that's put back in and means you earn more money on top of it. So multiplying, overusing work multiplied by unpredicted capital growth. Unpredicted, we know about capital growth. Capital is money, growth of money. So overusing work multiplied by unpredicted money growth. It was raining. That was the first day all summer it had rained hard enough to stop work. It was now July and I had ridden my 10 speed, yes my old one, though I had bought a new inner tube, over to Arnold's house. Arnold had made the hippie iced tea that was sweet without sugar and I sipped it while we dragged out the notebooks. I had left all the paperwork at his house because it would have been too hard to explain to my parents. There were now five three ring binders and in fact I knew almost nothing about it myself. It had all been kind of a blur. It's all just too, too groovy, man, Arnold said, putting his tea down. Free market industry and capitalism at their best. It's like watching a really good documentary about business. Ugh, far out. I don't know what we're doing, 
I said. Not a clue, except that we're cutting a lot of grass and I'm not getting much sleep. And this morning, my mother said she was forgetting what I look like. Ah, it's lucky we got a rain day. We were in Arnold's screened-in porch, and he had spread the notebooks out on a large, round picnic table. It gives us a little time for you to catch up and see the beauty of what you're doing, man. The rain was hammering down, almost deafening, and I found myself liking it. I used to hate rain in the summer because it ruined vacation time. Now I thought rain was beautiful. Why would Lawn Boy like rain and think it's beautiful? There are a couple of reasons. What do you think? One reason might be... He doesn't have to work that day, right? His mom's saying, I don't know what you look like. If it rains hard enough, they can't cut grass. You're not supposed to cut grass when it's wet. Rain also is beautiful because what does it cause the grass to do? It causes the grass to grow. So the more rain you have, the more frequently you have to mow. So Lawn Boy's saying, you know, hey, if it, there's more rain, the grass grows a lot and I get more jobs. We'd better start with an overall view of the lawn cutting phase of your operation. Oh, yes, I thought. Let's start with that. Like I knew anything. Like I would have an operation with phases. Currently, you have 15 employees, man. I stared at him. That can't be right. He nodded, smiling. Surprising, isn't it? Technically, I guess Pascal is more of a partner. And really, they are all partners in a way. They share the income from their work with you, the company head. Fifteen people? He nodded again. Now, the truth is they earn their living because you found them work. And that brings up a second consideration of this phase of your operation. Fifteen people work for me? I wished he would quit talking about my operation and its phases. I, it was starting to sound like General Motors or something. Yeah, and that should lead you to consider your responsibility as a business head. You owe your employees that consideration. Well, sure, if there's 15 people working for me, I should consider them. But I don't know what you mean specifically. Well, think of it like this. They're seasonal workers. When the cutting is done, they're no longer employed by you. A responsible employer should set aside some of his income, a percentage, to give them a bonus when the season ends to ease their transition into other forms of employment. I should? I mean, yes, I guess I should. How does that work? Well, first, let's look at your personal gross income from lawn cutting, shall we? It's really the only figure that counts for this aspect of your operation. Uh, of course. Aspect, I thought. First phases, now aspects of my operation? I'm 12 years old and I have aspects! <sighs> well, for reasons we'll cover later, taxes are going to take a hefty bite, hefty bite and you have some small expenses. Gas for your mower, oil, that sort of thing. I kept track of those items in this expense notebook. Then there's my fee. I'm taking 5% across the board for this and the market work, just to simplify things, rather than work on a sliding scale, all right? Uh, oh, my, yes, I thought. Let's keep it simple. I felt like I was drowning in aspects and phases. Good? I, I mean, I guess it is good. Sure, good. So, before taxes, my percentage in expenses, you grossed out at just over eight. Eight what? Eight thousand dollars. Eight thousand dollars? Yeah, of course, like I said, man, that's gross. And your net won't be anywhere near that. I think you should perhaps set aside a pretty good chunk for employee relief. Perhaps 20% at this stage. <coughs> Excuse me. Naturally, that will go up as they earn more. They'll appreciate it when the season ends. I have this sudden memory of when I was nine years old. Back then, I thought that someday I might be a professional basketball player. This in spite of the fact that I'm fairly short and can't make a basket to save my soul. But I thought when I was nine that if I just had the right ball, a true professional ball made by Spalding, I would and could be good enough to be a professional player when I grew up. The problem was that the ball was expensive. There was no way my parents could spend that kind of money on one measly basketball, and I couldn't find a way to get enough money on my own. So I wound up with a cheap ball, and I thought no chance at a professional basketball career. So how many basketballs could I buy with $8,000? $8,000? I was only three years older now than I had been then. True, it was a big three years, but just after three years, I could afford all the Spalding basketballs I wanted. I was rich. Rich! What a strange word that was. It didn't really mean anything in itself. Rich. Short for Richard? 
Why does rich mean having tons of money? How many spalling balls could I buy really with $8,000? Say they're $20 each to make it simple. Five balls for $100. 50 for $1,000. 400. I could buy 400 spalling basketballs. Wait, what do you mean? I suddenly remembered something Arnold had said. You said something about this being a small amount of money. Is that what you said? I don't know what you're used to having, but I can't think of $8,000 as a small amount. Me either, by the way. Well, Arnold said, everything is relative. Take it in the whole scheme of things, $8,000, though significant, is not that large. If Bill Gates, who owns Microsoft, for instance, could hold all his wealth in his hands and he suddenly dropped it, just on the way to the ground, it would make over $40,000 in interest. So what he's saying is Bill Gates is a billionaire. He's one of the richest men in the world. And if he could hold all his wealth in his arms, it, which is impossible, but if he could and he dropped it to the floor, that would take what? One second? One second? He's saying, Arnold's saying, on the way to the ground, it would make over $40,000 in interest. Now remember, interest is the money you earn on having money. So if you invest your money in companies or savings accounts, interest is the money you get for having it in there. So just in one second, he would earn another $40,000. How? Huh? I tried to picture that. Look, I understand that I don't have as much as Bill Gates. Still, I'm very satisfied with what I have. I honestly don't know what I would do with more money than that. Seriously? Absolutely. It's more money than I could even think of having. Having. It wasn't that long ago I was wondering where to get enough money to buy an inner tube for my 10-speed. Now I could buy a whole new bike. I could buy a bunch of them. Uh, well then, Arnold shrugged inside. We have a bit of a problem. What do you think the problem is? What do you think the problem is with Blonde Boy? Chapter 8. Dramatic economic expansion. Its causes and effects. Dramatic. If something's dramatic, it's overblown. It's huge. You know, your baby brother might get, um, you might touch your baby brother and it's, ah, he hit me, mom. Oh, I'm going to have a bruise. You know, that's dramatic. Um, dramatic economic expansion. Economic is the flow of money. Expansion means to grow. So huge or overblown money flow expansion. It's causes and effects. Your problem, Arnold said, is both simple and a bit complex. Uh, more tea? No, I'm fine. Outside, the rain seemed to let up a bit and then came down harder. I could hear thunder way off somewhere. What are you talking about? He took a sip of tea. Ah, man, I like this tea. Comes straight from India, you know? All the yogis drink it, man. I hear the Beatles used to drink it all the time. Arnold? Oh. Well, let's go back to when this all started, all right? Yvette, please. You remember that I had a cash flow problem then. Instead of paying you cash, I started an account for you under my own name because you're too young to have an account. Well, yeah. And we bought 80 shares of coffin manufacturing firm for 50 cents a share. I nodded. I'm still with you. There's some risk, of course, with buying what they call spent penny stocks, which these were. If, but I thought with just $40 invested, even if the company went belly up, the loss rate would not be unbearable. So he's saying penny stocks are the ones that are really small because the company hasn't had a chance to grow and gain a lot of money yet. So companies that are just starting might have penny stocks or really cheap stocks that you can buy. Um, I'm still here. Well, the stock didn't lose. After the second quarter of the year, it turned out the company had a great deal of land in northern Minnesota, upwards of 2,000 acres of hardwoods that they had planned to use to make the coffins. Another sip of tea, and I waited. This had not been reported initially, but the land was with the valuable hardwoods was free and clear and belonged to the company. It was part of their net worth that nobody knew about, and when word got out, the stock rose dramatically. How dramatically, Arnold? Normally, I dislike these things because they give a wrong impression about the stock market, dude. 10, 12% a year is a good figure to think about making in the market. 
these explosions are very unpredictable and there's always an element of risk. And one shouldn't plan on <gasps> how big of an explosion, Arnold. Well, the first day it jumped to just over $10 and I thought of selling. Stock purchased at 50 cents and sold for $10 gives an excellent return. But the sudden surge caused a lot of interest and people started wanting to buy the stock and that drove the price up further and still further and Finally, I sold at $100.10 a share. So your $40 investment brought you just over $8,000, less my 5% commission. So when a stock goes up, if people are interested in buying a stock, the price of something goes up. It's the, the cost of supply and demand. For example, toilet paper prices started going up. Hand sanitizer prices started going up when we started dealing with the coronavirus epidemic. That's what they're talking about. If more people want a product, the price for that product goes up because the more people who buy it, the less of the product there is. So he bought a whole bunch of stocks at 50 cents a share and then sold them for $100.10. So he made $8,000 just on selling his stocks in a very short amount of time. Arnold, you mean I have $8,000 on top of the other 8,000? I dumped them together in my head. Eight and eight is 16. $16,000? Less commissions and all those other things, taxes, less taxes. $16,000? Well, not exactly, dude. I assumed I had a rather free hand with your investment, so I reinvested it and some of the other money you've been giving me. And frankly, I took a daring risk with one stock, dude. I invested my own money at the same time. It took the same risk. What did you invest it in? It was one of those freak software things. Believe me, normally I wouldn't give it a second thought. They're just too big of a gamble. But the quarterly earnings looked good, and they had a new idea about nationwide internet use. Something to do with vastly improving the speed. A company called Walleye. I bought you 3,000 groovy shares at 60 cents a share. Uh, and we lost? Oh, no. The new internet system they evolved swept the country, and the stock jumped to $10 and split, which gave you 6,000 shares at 5, then went back up to $10 and split again, which gave you 12,000 shares, which climbed back up to 55 a share, uh, hung there, and flattened out. So I sold it, and when it went back down to $4. He had, as they say, gone past my knowledge envelope about the stock market. So you sold my 3,000 shares for $4? No, no. He shook his head. It had split and then re-split. You had 12,000 shares at $4 a share. I must point out this kind of growth is unprecedented. So if a company's growth starts going crazy, they can do something called splitting the stocks. And so if they decide to split a stock. That means if it was worth, um, one stock was worth $10, they could split that into two stocks of $5 each, if that makes sense. That way they have more shares in the company, more people can invest in the company, so they get more money for their business. Uh, he had 12,000 shares at $4 a share. Do the math. How much money is that? 12,000 times $4. 48. The numbers were there. I knew they were, but they didn't register. It was just too much to understand to believe. I was 12. That morning, my parents were having trouble deciding if they could afford a newer used car. Five weeks earlier, my grandmother had given me her old riding lawnmower, and I'd started mowing lawns. I was only 12, and Arnold had sold 12,000 shares of walleye for $4 a share. $48,000, is that right? Well, less commission, of course. Oh, of course. Sure. Right. Um, let me get this straight. Sure. I know it's all kind of far out. No, no, wait. You're telling me that I started with an old lawnmower and now I have... Well, what do I have? Well, from all of your stocks and bonds right now, man, over $50,000. It's less because I took out my commission, but I will, of course, reinvest it. Huh. Of course, all in sa solid, safe, blue chip stocks and government bonds, he smiled. Perhaps you better take a few deep breaths. You seem to be weaving a bit. 
I have fifty thousand dollars uh, and change, plus the eight thousand for mowing a- and change. You, he said, smiling, have had a very groovy month, man. But I didn't f- hear him finish the sentence. I had fainted. Wow. So with Arnold's help, Lawn Boy has fifty thousand plus the eight thousand for mowing. Fifty-eight thousand dollars. I can't wait to see what they get up to next. See you, agents.